In this week's Weekly Story Jokes, we bring you our best joke compilation of the week. These jokes are sure to make you laugh, from the first one to the last one. These are our story jokes which we love to generate. This week we bring you four jokes, starting with a joke about a large liar, until we end with a joke about a doctor's dilemma. So, sit back, get the popcorn, and get ready to laugh until your stomach ache. Our first joke of the day is a joke about a very large liar. In today's cartoon story joke, we will tell you a story about lying. But to get to the comedy portion of today's story, we must delve deeply into the history of lying. Let's face it, folks, humans, and fibbing. It's a match made in, well, not exactly heaven. But hey, at least we're consistent from little Tommy denying he borrowed his sister's doll, looking at you, Timmy Two Left Feet, to politicians, well, politicking, lying's been around longer than bad puns at a dad joke convention. You turn on the news, and bam. There it is. Mayor caught in tall tale. Or, did Wall Street whoppers cause the great pie fight of 2008? Lies are everywhere, multiplying faster than roaches at a bakery convention. You, but you get the picture. Studies even say we all sprinkle a few whoppers into our daily conversations, which some folks are calling a crisis. Here's the thing. A little white lie never hurt a fly. Unless it's a whopper so big, it squishes a fly. We've got a whole thesaurus dedicated to softening the blow. Fibs, fudges, embellishments, because flat out lie sounds so harsh, right? Now hold on before you banish Pinocchio to Honesty Island. Lies, believe it or not, can be heroes in disguise. Ever heard of wartime deceptions? Yeah, those whoppers saved lives. And let's not forget the countless social faux pas avoided by a well-placed, that outfit looks amazing from afar. Bless your heart, Brenda. Those leggings are a crime against fashion. So, the next time you hear someone ranting about lying politicians or catch your reflection practicing that totally believable alibi, take a deep breath. We may be a planet of prevaricators, but that doesn't mean we're all mustache-twirling villains. Let's focus on the whys behind the lies, not just the fact that they exist. After all, a little honesty is a good thing, but sometimes a whopper is the social lubricant that keeps the wheels turning and prevents international pie-related incidents. Now let's jump straight into the deep end of the pool with our comedy of the day. This old man, let's just call him Uncle Joe for today's joke. We're staying in a small town not too far from a major city. Now Uncle Joe was used to disappear on weekends without his wife, to go and play a game of golf with his mates. After the game, he will always get back home to talk about how bad his game was, or how drunk the boys got at the golf course, and the reason why it's just not the place for a lady like his wife. Never in his life would he have thought that his golfing stories would one day came crushing down with hilarity. So, this year, when it was Uncle Joe's birthday, his wife made a very special arrangement to take Uncle Joe on a very special trip, being his birthday and all. There would be no golf on that weekend, as she has planned a very special day for him. During the morning, a taxi stopped in front of their house to take them to the big city, as Uncle Joe surely never venture into these places, as he is always playing golf with his friends on the weekend. His wife gave the driver the details of this place she has picked up on the internet, as she also never ventures into the big city, being a small town girl and all. The taxi dropped them of and left. Uncle Joe was clearly not impressed with this place his wife wanted him to enter being a small town guy, but she insisted, it will be okay, honey. Don't worry, you will be just fine. Now, as they entered the venue, the guy at the door said, Hi, Uncle Joe. Nice seeing you again. This took his wife by surprise, and she said, Joe, where did this guy know you from? Uncle Joe dragged his wife inside and said, His dad and I went to school together. I have been knowing him for many years. Didn't know he was working in the city. This put his wife to rest, and they went to get a seat. As they sat down, the barman shouted to Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe, same as usual. Now his wife was very confused. 
Don't you dare telling me his dad was at school with you. Not at all, Uncle Joe said, waving at the barman. I play golf with his dad, and when he is not working, he joins us for a couple of drinks after the game. He knows me very well. Now, as you can imagine, his wife was very nervous at this stage, but being innocent Uncle Joe, she calmed down. Then, a very attractive waitress with a low-hanging blouse came to deliver the drinks. The stepped over Uncle Joe's legs, leaned over and gave him a little kiss on his neck and said, Are you going to have the same today, Uncle Joe? That was obviously the last straw for Uncle Joe's wife, so she dragged him out of that place and got the first taxi coming by. She forced him into the taxi and said, You are going home immediately. After she gave the driver directions the taxi took off, Uncle Joe did not say a word. But then it happened. The taxi driver looked into his mirror and said, Uncle Joe, I see you got yourself an ugly one today. <laughs> In our second joke of the day, we bring you an old lady and a prattle parrot. In today's cartoon story joke, we meet a mom who got so pampered her lavish gift went from a chatty parrot to a feather-ruffling plot twist. Ever heard about the parrot who became a courtroom star? Yep, forget about those boring witness testimonies. This feathered friend had the jury eating out of its wing. Picture this, a husband gets shot and who's the unexpected hero? None other than Polly the parrot chirping, don't shoot loud and clear in court. Talk about a real tweet turner. But wait, let's rewind a bit. Parrots weren't always cozying up to legal dramas. Back in the day, they were rubbing feathers with emperors and adventurers. The ancient Romans had them on speed dial as pets, while Christopher Columbus probably had a few perched on his ship, giving travel tips on the way to the Americas. Fast forward to the age of exploration, and parrots were the ultimate globetrotters, hitching rides on ships like it was a deluxe cruise. Sure, life at sea wasn't a cakewalk for these colorful chatterboxes, but hey, it beats being stuck in a birdcage, right? Nowadays, parrots are all the rage as pets, but behind those vibrant feathers lies a tale of woe. With millions of them kept in captivity, the parrot world is facing a crisis. From smuggling shenanigans to neglectful pet parenting, these birds are getting the short end of the perch. It's like a real-life soap opera, but with fewer feathers and more drama. So, next time you think about adding a parrot to your household, remember, you might be inviting more than just a talkative friend. It's a tale as old as time. From courtroom heroics to historical escapades, parrots have seen it all. But amidst the laughter and tears, one thing's for sure. Their future hangs in the balance and it's up to us to give them a happily ever after. All right, folks, time to switch gears from serious to seriously hilarious. Put away your textbooks and get ready to dive headfirst into the deep end of laughter. It's joke time, where the punchlines are as golden as chicken nuggets on a Sunday morning. This old lady had four sons. Her husband has passed many years ago, and as it was her 85th birthday, the four sons decided to spoil their mother. However, as each one would like to outdo their sibling with the present that they would get for their mother on her birthday. Fortunately for the old lady, all her sons are very successful in their own way and have done very well for themselves, so they have all the resources to spoil their mother properly. The first son is a master builder, and he decided to build his mother a brand new house with all the amenities that his mother can ever dream about she will be able to live the rest of her life in utmost comfort and never pay for any housing again. The second son is an international film producer, so he builds a small theater for his mother in her new house with comfortable leather seats, the latest in digital projectors, the best sound system as she cannot hear that well anymore, and a library of movies that she will never be able to finish watching for the rest of her life. The third son is a Mercedes-Benz car dealer so he had the finest cabriolet with the most comfortable heated seats in his mother's favorite color, delivered to her new house. The fourth son is a professor at the local university and well known for his literature. Now he knows that his mother eyes, 
are not what they need to be as she battles to read the small letters in her Bible every night. So, he traveled the world to find a solution to his mother's problem. In one of the eastern countries, he happened to meet a monk that have spent his life teaching a parrot to recite the Bible word for word. This was an unbelievable feat as it took 20 years to teach the parrot. You can ask the parrot anything and he will then tell you the chapter of the Bible and the exact words by verse. The parrot has also been taught to speak in a very loud, clear priestly voice which will be well understood for someone of his mother's age. After a lengthy negotiation and an explanation of his mother's condition, he managed to convince the monk to sell him this parrot for a large amount of money. This money, however, had to be paid to a local charity, as money have no value to the monk. An international company specializing in the transportation, quarantine procedures, and on-time delivery of animals were contracted to move the parrot across the globe. So, the parrot was finally delivered to his mother. A couple of weeks later, every son received a handwritten letter from their mother that individually read as followed. To the masted builder, she wrote, This house is so large, and as I only use the kitchen and the small room next to the kitchen, the rest of the house is only gathering dust. Thank you, however, for trying to treat me on my birthday. Love your mother. To the film producer, the mother wrote, This theater is big enough to house 100 people, and as most of my friends are already dead, I find it very lonely watching a movie on my own. The leather seats are very comfortable, and I sink into them, in comfort. However, getting out of them is a major issue, as my body is not what it used to be. But thank you very much for the present. It was a very nice idea. Love your mother. To the car dealer's son, the mother wrote, Thank you so much for the car you gave me for my birthday. It is truly a status symbol. But I am too old to travel to the shops and I am much more comfortable having my groceries delivered from the shop straight to my front door. It is a very nice car though, and I appreciate the present. Love your mother. To the professor the mother wrote in her letter, You were always such a considerate child and knowing exactly what is needed for someone of my age. You have always been able to find the small things in life to be the most important. Your present I have found to be the most practical of all the presents I have received on my birthday. It might have been small, but the chicken was delicious. <laughs> In our third joke of the day, we bring you a real birthday blunder. Hilarious. In today's cartoon story joke, we will tell you a story about a birthday and feeling special on this day. But to get to the comedy portion of today's story, we dig through a minefield of history of birthdays. Let's face it, birthdays, yawn, cake, presents, forced merriment with distant relatives who keep asking if you've found a nice spouse yet. Spoiler alert, fungus are low maintenance companions, but not exactly spouse material. But hey, before you decide to spend your birthday wrapped in a blanket, muttering existential dread at the wall, Let's spice things up with a little history lesson. Did you know birthdays weren't always about bad small talk and questionable cake frosting? In fact, the first birthday celebrations were throwdowns fit for a, well, a pharaoh. We're talking ancient Egyptian people. Party favors, solid gold crocodiles, probably. The Greeks, bless their candle-loving souls, were the first to stick birthday flames on cakes Turns out, they weren't celebrating Aunt Gertrude, but the goddess Artemis. So, the next time you blow out those candles, imagine you're a mythical being and not just someone who forgot to go to the gym this year. Speaking of things people used to frown upon, birthdays and Christianity had a rocky relationship at first. Apparently, early Christians considered celebrating your birth date a tad too pagan for their liking. Thankfully, someone finally convinced them that baby Jesus deserved a party too, and the tradition we know and love or tolerate began to spread. Fast forward to Germany, where birthday cakes finally got their big break. Because, let's be honest, cake is the real star of the show. This is where things get interesting. 
the Germans invented Kinderfeste, which translates to kid fests. Shocking, I know. Basically, it was an excuse to pile sugar on a child and light it on fire while they made a wish. Safety regulations must have been way more relaxed back then. But fear not, gluten-free friends. The birthday cake revolution wasn't complete until the Industrial Revolution waltzed in. Suddenly, sugar became affordable, and bakeries could crank out cakes faster than you could say, piñata. This meant birthday parties for everyone. From there, birthday traditions spread around the world, morphing into the quirky celebrations we have today. So, the next time you blow out those candles, remember, you are part of a long and fascinating tradition that started with worshiping gods and somehow ended up with singing Baby Shark off-key. Now that you had a history lesson on birthdays, let's scramble the jets to fight of all the sad faces, because it's comedy time. This husband woke up on his birthday expecting breakfast in bed and presents from his wife and kids. As he was the boss of this large company and was turning 50, it was supposed to be a big celebration on this marvelous achievement. Hitting the big 5-0 does not come around every day, and he was planning on feeling special for the day. He had this illusion that he would be spoiled to oblivion and be partying all the way until sunrise the next morning. As he was laying there, he wondered why things are just so normal in his household. Surely everyone hasn't forgotten his special day. He kept feeling a bit annoyed and thought the breakfast and festivities would start at the breakfast table. Once again, he was filled with disappointment as his wife and kids were doing exactly what they were doing every normal morning. This was a very disappointing start to his morning as he finished his cold coffee and rubbery breakfast. So, off to work he went as if this was just any other day, feeling, however, like he had just walked out of a dentist's office, not in the mood for any talking at all. However, great was his surprise when he entered the office and the secretary greeted him with happy birthday, boss. Hope you are going to have a wonderful day. Well, it seemed that at least someone was still interested enough in him to remember his birthday. As lunchtime approached, the secretary said, You know, boss, the office is so quiet today. Why don't me and you go for a quick lunch to celebrate your birthday? Marvelous idea, he thought. So off they went to a casual restaurant. After a quick meal, the secretary took him by surprise by suggesting that he come over to her house to continue his birthday celebration. As she was a very attractive woman, to boss complied with this lovely suggestion. Once he got to her house, she told him to sit on the couch and get ready for a real party as she was going to slip into the bedroom to get something a bit more applicable for a real celebration. A minute later, the bedroom door opened and out walked the boss's family, his parents, all his works colleagues with birthday cakes and many presents. It's obvious that this was a well-planned surprise, which he should have been well appreciated off. The only problem was that there he was sitting on the couch, but naked, like the day he was born. <laughs> In our last joke of the day, we bring you a doctor and his battle with an engineer. This is a real doctor's dilemma. Ever feel like conquering the world is easier than finding a decent job these days? Well, in today's cartoon story joke, this engineer did, and his solution is as crazy as a fake mustache on a warrior. Ditch the dusty textbooks, folks, because who needs them when you have ancient warfare wisdom served up with a side of flaming insults? That's right, we are talking Sun Tzu's Art of War, the ultimate smackdown guide disguised as a military manual. Buckle up, history buffs, or should I say history bluffs? All right, let's crack open the fortune cookie of ancient warfare. The art of war, also known as Sun Tzu's flame-throwing roast of your enemies, attorney not included. This dusty tome might be older than your grandma's flip phone. Okay, maybe not that old, but let's just say they didn't have fidget spinners in Sun Tzu's day. We're talking way back in the BC era, when spring and autumn wasn't just a clothing line. Imagine this, Sun Tzu, or as I like to call him, Sun Bro, because Tzu sounds suspiciously like your uncle's failed attempt at a rap career. Sun Bro wasn't just a dude who liked yelling a lot, although that probably happened too. He penned this 13-chapter epic, 
filled with more battle tips than a Call of Duty loading screen. But hold your horses, or chariots, I guess. It gets better. For like 1,500 years, the art of war was the Justin Bieber of military manuals, topping the charts in what some random emperor called the Seven Military Classics. Basically, it was the Beyonce of bamboo scrolls, fierce, fabulous, and always dropping knowledge like a mic. Now here's the plot twist. Sun Tzu wasn't just about sharpening sticks and grunting. He was all about strategy, like way more strategy than your average sock puppet show. Weapons? Check. Weather? Check. Keeping your troops in line? Double check, because nobody likes a mutiny, especially not during nap time. Plus, don't forget spying, because apparently the best warriors also know how to rock a fake mustache. This book wasn't just some dusty relic. It traveled the world faster than a carrier pigeon with a social media addiction. French translations? Check. English versions? You betcha. The art of war spread faster than gossip in a toga party. And guess what? Forget conquering empires. This book can help you with literally anything. Business? Boom. Politics? Nailed it. Even dominating your friends at Mario Kart? Easy peasy. Because apparently, ancient Chinese wisdom is the ultimate cheat code for life. So next time you're facing a battle, whether it's a presentation at work or a particularly stubborn stain on your shirt, remember, Sun Tzu's got your back. He's like your own personal Yoda, dispensing wisdom from beyond the grave. Grab your metaphorical lightsaber or stapler, whatever works, and get ready to dominate. Because with the art of war on your side, you're basically unstoppable. Just maybe avoid the whole conquering empires thing, okay? Now let's get the joke machine started because things are about to get funnier than a chariot race with a runaway ostrich. An engineer was unemployed for a long time, the economy was flat, and there were no new projects where he could apply for work. On the spur of the moment, he decides to open a medical practice. He advertises, get any treatment for $500. If it does not help, you get a thousand bucks back. A real doctor thinks it's good opportunity to make a quick thousand dollars and walks in. I lost all taste in my mouth. He lied. No problem, said the engineer. Drink two tablespoons of this. He took a small bottle from the shelf and gave it to the doctor. However, the doctor immediately spits it out and exclaims indignantly, but it's petrol. There he is, said the engineer kindly. Your taste is obvious. It will be $500. The doctor reluctantly pays, but after a few days, he is back. I have lost my memory. I cannot remember anything. Again, the engineer took a small bottle from the shelf and ordered the doctor to drink two tablespoons. Again, the doctor spits it out and says that it is petrol. Wonderful, said the engineer. If you remember what petrol tastes like, your memory I clearly back. It will be $500. Mad the doctor paid, but with revenge, he wanted to pay the engineer back. A week later, he is there again. My eyes suddenly deteriorated so much, I'm practically blind, complains the doctor. Unfortunately, I have no treatment for that says the engineer. As promised, here is your thousand dollars. But it's only five hundred dollars, said the doctor confusedly close. My shock therapy worked, cheered the engineer. You can even see the detail on banknotes again. Give back those five hundred dollars. <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here. <laughs>